And hey guys, well I'm uh, limping around out here, but I'm going to try something. I wasn't going to uh, make any videos. Anyway, I wasn't going to make any videos but while I was sitting around with nothing to do. <laughs> I, I, I snuck out here one day and you know I did it all sitting down. I, I poured this thing up right here. Uh, this is a fix set, total boat fix set. Well in there, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a Star Wars a Rebel fighter inside there. So I was just going to make a little present for my grandson. He's into this stuff. So I, I made myself a, a mold out of a white vinegar jug. And it had a like water, you know? Like a water jug. Something like that, but bigger. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> It took a while to get that centered in there, and I put, I poured some blue epoxy in the bottom. It's got some chestnut holes and stuff to make it sort of look like it's flying over some sort of marsh or something. So that was sort of the idea behind it. And then I was going to, you know, turn this down into a bottle, so it'd be a, like a ship in a bottle. That's the whole idea. Uh, but I'm, I did make a mistake. Whenever I poured my epoxy, that's the one. It looks blue, but this is clear from here up. It looks blue because this blue sort of reflects into to it. But when I when I poured the clear, it was it, you know it had a top on it like this right here. And I put the top on. That was a bad mistake. Because I put it in the pressure pot and it had no place for the gas to go. So I got me some real nice pretty voids right down in this area. So I decided that I would, uh, I built myself a little, whatever you call them, borders or something, you know, to hold epoxy right here with, with hot glue and some more plastic. And these voids, they go in quite a way. So I thought, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this sort of look like it's going through an asteroid belt, you know, with just chunks of stuff in it. So that all this would go into the, into the voids and look like rocks or whatever. So I did that uh, yesterday, put it in a pressure pot, and I took it out this morning. And last night I was watching some videos with my wife. She, she likes to watch videos, YouTube videos with me sometimes. And you know, I was watching this guy turn in epoxy. And I kept, I kept saying, well, hey, he just, he's just doing that all wrong. No wonder he's getting chip outs. I'd say something like, you know, speed it up, dude. You're, going, you're turning too slow. You know, your, your rest is too too low, you know, et cetera, et cetera. My wife said, you know, you you need to just make a video, you know, of how you do it step by step, nice and slow. I mean, you know, she said, you don't have to get out there and turn it. You can just sort of you know, do little short demos. And I said, well, this would be a good opportunity. You know, I didn't video any of this because you know, I wasn't going to make a video because I knew I couldn't. But uh, I'm getting rapidly better. And I do sit down in my stool a lot. So I thought I would do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put, uh, I found the center I want, which is the best I can get to the center of that ship right there, right in there. And so I made that. That's going to be my center on, on, the, uh, on the live center. I'm going to put a face plate on this end. Now, here's the first thing. Here's the first lesson I want to give anybody and everybody that turns epoxy. You need to have an extremely secure way of holding it. And the reason you have to, in my opinion, and I've turned a lot of epoxy, as you know, if you want clean cuts, you're going to have to turn fast. If you turn fast and you're not attached quite well and it comes flying off, the harder and faster it, it flies, okay? So you just need to make sure that wherever it's attached to the lathe, that it is extremely well secured, which is why I will be using a faceplate on this. And I'll show you how I'm doing that. Now, I know this is probably not flat in relation to this, so if I put a faceplate on it right here, it's just almost too big. The chances of me hitting my center is probably not very good, so I'm going to show you how I do that. 
the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sit up here. I'm going to, I'm going to drill some holes and put put my screws in very loosely to uh, you know attach this faceplate. Then then we'll go over to the left and we'll sit it in there. Oh, that's good. Put this in here. My hole already done. I'm bring this if I can. Maybe. There we go. You see here how there's it's got that void right there. Okay, so if I had that face plate flat against this, this end would be way off. So what I do is I put it on with just a couple of screws, and I'm going to fill that with uh, some CA glue and some dust. So let, let me get that. These are not very fine shavings, but they'll work. So I'm going to give that a few minutes to uh, to sit up real good. And I'll take it off and put fresh screws in and put it back on. And then we'll talk about turning the fox in. And, all right, I've got it all. I took it off, put all the rest of the screws in, and uh, put it back on. And I've done whirled it up. And, you know, it's not bad, but, you know, this ain't round in the first place, and those stick out. So I'm going to go ahead before the lecture begins and uh, knock these gray things down and sort, sort of, you know, maybe get it a little bit round. I, I'm gonna, I have to stand to do that, but I'll you know, go about a minute or two, two or three minutes and I'll sit down for a while um, and come back because I, I can sort of feel it. And tomorrow's the day you really feel it. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I've already, I've already set my rest up, which is I'll talk about how important rest is. I've got this set, and I've got it a little high. That's where I want it. And I'm going to tell you why we do all that. I'll be turning very fast in some people's minds. I'll be turning this at probably 2,500. i got to get that out of my way a little bit. That's my stool. That's my resting spot. I, I tried to see if I could turn sitting down. If I had a higher stool, I probably could, but this is the highest one I got. And my life is higher than normal, uh, simply because, uh, you know, it's so comfortable here. Your life needs to be right where this, this is, right at the top of your hips. It's so hurt. But in my opinion, your life has to be where it works for you, where it's comfortable. And let's see. Let me get my relatively, relative crap together. Let's do it. You get up to about 2,500. There you go, about 2,449. you to notice is there's there is zero chip out here. You can see it, the witness line where it changes colors a little bit. But uh, the first and I gotta go deeper here. The first lesson I wanna well I, I guess you can call it a lesson. I don't know what you call it but first thing I want want to show you 
said, I'm, I'm getting ready to come in right here. And uh, so always, you always want to come into it and not out from it. It's just like, think about it this way. This, this, this is just like turning in grain on wood. Because if you come across here, you, you're going to be turning, if, when you get to the end, you're going to be turning unsupported epoxy. Now, if you go in like this, you've got stuff on this side, so it's supported. But if you come in here, turn in this way, this corner's unsupported, and the chances of it popping off is pretty dang good. Like, it's going to happen. So, and I always, always like my rest really close to things. It, uh, you get a better job when the rest is close because it's all, it's all, it takes all of it right here and, uh, you know, you don't end up with any of this kind of stuff right here because all, all your pressure is right there. It's right there on that end. screw, right there. So now I'm going, to, I'm going to start coming in here. When I get this round, we'll quit and then we'll get the whiteboard out and we'll talk about some things. That's 2632. So I'm going to come in this way, right here. Break time. You see how it looks? I'm gonna sit down for a few minutes. See when you 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 see that or hear that sort of that's because I'm hitting different textures. And it's getting there, slowly but surely. I may salvage this sap sucker after all. I do have a couple of little bubbles inside there on my ship, and I don't know why that happened. Well, I do, it's because I didn't, I put the top on and the gas couldn't go nowhere, dummy. Looks a little rough right in there, but I'll straighten that up later. Looks like maybe I'm getting past the uh, voids. i tell you what I'm going to do before I sit down. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, fix those voids. And I'm going to do that with CO. So, I reset this already. And for surely that is good and dry by now. So let's hit it again till we get till we get it to the round. Felt something there I didn't like. Let me fix it. It just sort of felt like I had something hanging right in this area here. Because my my tool wasn't sliding like it ought to. And you made that little CA glue got on the rest. The sandpaper takes care of that. All right, we're in good shape now. We roll on. Looks like we're getting there. We're almost getting to the round here. I'm only getting to the round here, and then I'm going to bring this down for the, the top of the bottle. All right.
Oh, see, I can come back to the tip of that right there. There you go. That way I don't get the end of my wing sawed off. I'm going to clean that off real fast. I'll take a second. I'm going to get that square. Sometimes they want to chip out when you do this, so you got to be real careful. The only time you can go uphill using a round cutter is if you hold it at an angle. If you hold it straight, this outer edge is going to hit and it's going to cause it to do that and cause you a bunch of chip outs. So you normally it would come downhill, but if you want to go uphill, uh, turn it counterclockwise just a little and come in here like that and you won't have that problem. Hey guys. That's the old stool here. Uh, take a minute here do something other than turn in or sand in or polishing and talk, talk a little bit about uh, how I use uh, carbide cutters. And I've had several people, you know, sort of question what is a two inch radius. So I thought I would quickly explain what that is. Now see, normally they start off, you know, just totally square. And these are, this one is, happens to be a 15 millimeter from here to here is 15 millimeters. So if you, If it's a two inch radius, I figure out how this thing goes here. If it's a two inch radius, the way the way that is determined is if you take a now you know I'm not an artist, so don't be criticized that. If you take a two inch circle right here, let's just say that's two inches, right there. And if you come along here and you sit this up here anywhere and measure from point here to point here, so that's fifteen. 15 millimeters, the radius you get right here is what's on that, uh, is what this is. Okay. Now you can get these uh, four and sixes. I don't know about eights, but now if you uh, come out here and you got a six inch one, which I know that's a little more than six inches naturally. Let me just have brushes off. So this is a six inch one here. Well then naturally this, this arc right in here right here, here and there, that arc is going to be a whole lot less. So that, that is, is how, when I say a two inch radius, that's what I'm talking about. Let's talk about positioning. Okay, let's assume that we got something on the, on the lace right here like this, and this is the direction it's going, all right? Uh, you know, your, your waves are down here, and you've got a tool rest sitting here like this, going down to here somewhere, like so. So you've got a tool brush right there, all right? All right, now, when you position the tool rest, you've got to be aware of where your actual cutter is hitting. So what you're looking at is when this is sitting right across here like this, you want to go where that cutter's hitting. This is a good way to show you right here. Okay, you see where the tool rest is now? If this is rotating, I'm going to be hitting below center. And what that's going to do is that's going to cause this to do like so. And you're going to get a catch. 
or in the case of epoxy, you're going to get a lot of chip out. Now, ideally, we'll come up here. We're going to make this thing a little taller. There you go. Ideally, you want to be, that's just pretty close, you want to be right on the, right on where I call it the crown, right on the very, very, very top there. On the outside, close part, close, the part closest to you. So that's the, that's the optimum position right there. I prefer to cut just a little high. Now let me give you my, don't go anywhere. Stop and give you my rationale for that. So let's say we're right here. Now what we're doing, we come up here, still not high enough. Let's go up here just a little bit more. Maybe a little better. Okay, so right, and I come up just a little above center. Probably more like here, right there, where I get I get the object I'm turning on the down stroke. And what that does is, if you come in here maybe a little too hard or something, it's going to push you away. Whereas if you come in here low, it's going to pull you down. Uh, so that's your difference right there. That's why it's always better to be either high or on center, never below. Uh, I, I think it doesn't matter what you're turning, wood, epoxy, whatever. All right? So that's, that's how that... That's the way you should say we've got a piece of wood that's sitting here like this right here. Like that, okay. Now everybody will tell you to take your cutter. Let's go ding 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 ding. That's the center, okay? You take your cutter and come in right on the horizontal. Alright? You know, that's what you know. One way and all these guys, that's that's the way they're gonna tell you to cut it and that's the way a lot of people do it, and there's nothing fine better than that other than, you know, you are totally scraping them. So you've got your cutter right here. So now what you're doing is you're, you're using this section right here, right there. You're using that section right there to do all your scraping. Now, I prefer to put a little bit of rake on it in the direction that I'm cutting. That actually gives you a, more of a cutting action than a scraping action. And it does quite well, and you always want to go in the direction that you're cutting. Now, if this is epoxy, or any other kind of resin, and you're whirling it up. Now, I like to whirl epoxy. Here's, here's my magic number right here. Right there, 2,500. That's where I like to, to turn epoxy. Okay, you're going to turn epoxy. First off, you're going to be a little above center. You're going to rake it a little bit, and you're going to go toward one end or the other. Okay, when you get down here at the end, right about here, you want to stop. Do not go over that end. Because what happens there is when you go over that end, this epoxy right here has no support right here and here. There's no support, so it's just wide open. So you start slicing, cutting, scraping, whatever, you're going to be putting pressure this way, and this is going to pop on you. It'll do it almost every time. So when you're turning, come in here at about oh, 30 degrees or so, come right here, come out here, come back into it like that. Same thing down here, come here, come back into it. Right? So now, the other thing I see a lot of people do, and that is, that, okay, let's just say we got, uh, we're looking at something on the lathe and we've got a, a valley here in it like that, all right? And you, you want to cut, you want to cut in this valley, okay. If, if you are holding it on the horizontal, and you're coming into here like this, you need to go downhill with your cutting, and when you start coming back up, you don't want to go uphill if you're holding it horizontal. Now, bear in mind, I'm saying holding it horizontal. So you would come here and downhill, stop here, and come here and downhill. If you come right here and you're still holding it horizontal and you're going this way, well, what's going to happen is right there, 
is going to catch right there. And what it's going to do is going to cause chip out or catch, even if you're doing wood, all right? So the way I do it, I go uphill, down the, I don't, I don't, I don't care, you know. So what I do is I, when I come here and let's just say I'm turning like this, okay? I've got it turned this way. When I get right here, I come like this and walk it uphill. Like this and walk it uphill. I turn here and I turn this way and I walk it uphill. Got it? You will not get catches or you will not get chip out that way, providing you're right here. All right. That's just about all the magic there is to turn into the carbide. Now that uh, that principle can also, you know, be for traditional tools. And I, I I learned on traditional tools and I used them a lot. But I was watching a good friend of mine turn uh, last night on TV, and I, I know he sharpened ten times. He was turning he was turning some pretty hard wood, but he sharpened about ten times, and I, I don't sharpen any. And I can do anything with that carbide that you can do with a traditional tool. And I've yet to see anybody take a bowl, that's a finished bowl, and say, hey, what did you cut this with? Oh, man, you use carbides. This bowl's no good. Well, okay. I rest my case on that. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to go over here and we're going to talk about sharpening. A lot of people don't even know you can sharpen carbides. I guarantee you, you can. I was watching a girl the other day, and she said, well, about time we order some more carbides, these things are getting dull. And, you know, I was watching on TV, so I couldn't comment. But I wanted to tell her, hey, hey, don't you know you can sharpen those dang things? So, anyway, you can. Now, here's here's what I think. I think you can sharpen them. Uh, what I'm going to show you, I call it the traditional method of sharpening, but they don't get as sharp as original. But I'm going to show you how to get them that way, too. But for a quick sharpening that gets them back, I would say probably 98% of the original sharpness. Uh, this is the way I do it now. i got two cards here, two diamond cards. Uh, that one's 400, and this one is 1,200. Now, what I've got here, this is my 15-millimeter you know, uh, carbide 2-inch radius cutter. And this is a 15 millimeter round cutter. And this one, and I'll get to it in a little while, that's a negative rake round cutter. Okay, so we're going to sharpen these two the traditional way. So we're going to sharpen these on the flat side first up here. Now I, I generally, unless I got a nick in it, I don't use the 400, I go directly to the 1200. I use WD-40. Uh, a lot of people prefer the lapping fluid. I've never used any. I don't know if it does any different or not. But I know this works, and I've seen some people use water, soapy water. So I'll put just a so dab anyway, in there. I've got this square cutter, and this one happens to be a square cutter. I just pulled it out of my drawer, and you notice it's got crap on it. And generally what I do is, you know, I don't try to clean that off. I use the, the, uh, the heavier one here, the, the 400, and I clean it off with it. Like so. It doesn't matter very much. So there you go. And then I get over to this one. And I'll do it a little while. Up and down, sideways, figure eights. You name it. Just any way you want to go. You can turn it if you want, but it don't make no never mind. You can do it as long as you want. Now, the finer your card, the sharper you're going to get it. It only makes We're sense. We're going to do the round one real quick here. Well, I can tell it's dragging there. And once you push it, it just wanted to clean. All right, that already works for that. How much is All right, look. Okay, here's what I want to show you here. I know you can't see it, but you're just going to take my word for it. There is a notch right here that's... Like, you know, like maybe hit the end of a screw or something. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's right there. Okay, I'm going to show you how to get that out now. All right, that's all there is to sharpen. This way. 
Now that'll get you 98% to factory, but it don't quite get you there. So now we're going to come over here. This is a little deal, I, I guess you could say invented, designed, or whatever, that I made. This is just made out of wood, no big deal. Now, this, this rod right in here turns, and then the end of it is threaded. I got a screw in it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this carbide cutter with the bad spot on it, and I'm going to put it back here. There we go. So I put this on, you know, I got it upside down, right? Yeah. All right. Now, see this thing? See, it's got a lip right here, and my tray's here. So what that does is that lets me keep it at a, at a distance right here. Now, now, I don't know what the angle is here. All right, so it doesn't, uh, I just make things, you know, I, when I make something, I know, it's, I know it don't sound like, but I say, well, hell, that looks good. That's the way I do it, guys, you know, that's just me. All right, there you go. All right, so I put just a little bit of that on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right in here, like this, get back here, and I'm going to start this set, sucker. All right, let's see what we got here. Well, I don't see the niche anymore, so I guess I got it out. Yeah, there's a little bit of it. Let me work on it a little bit more. I'm coming right over on the edge right there where I can see my bevel a little bit more. All right, I think that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and leave this in here. Might already give that a second or two because I, I, I bet it's hot. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, now that's uh, that's really sharp right now. I mean, you don't even need to do the top. All right, I'll do the rest in just a second. Got a visitor come in. All right, now this this one is factory sharp. I mean, that is. You can just feel it, it's sharp. So I'm going to put that in back up like this has been sharpened. Uh, this is the one I just got out. They have done nothing to it. All right, now, these, this one is this a little more difficult here. What you have to do, you want to take that out. Now, here's, here's the deal, guys. Take a good look at it. Don't nobody ask me for specifications and measurements and stuff because I just, you know, I don't know what that angle is and, you know, I can measure all that. And it's got a little lip right there so that it hangs underneath there like that to keep it the same way, but it's, you can see there, I mean, it's just, can't get much simpler than that. You just got to get your, your angle or your dangle right there and, you know, somebody probably could, smarter than me, can take and, take and measure this and get this to, coordinate with it and be in good shape but it, that ain't me so here's what I'm going to do here I'm going to use the rod and I'm going to take this square cutter square-ish cutter and I'm going to put it on upside down now this is just sort of a I call it my swag method now this is like if you get it you know like a niche in it or something Normally, just sharpening them on the top is good enough. But what you want to do is you just come in here and sort of eyeball it and just do it like that right there. I'm going to get over here where I've got more light where I can see what I'm doing better. And just come down just like that. Just like that. See, I'm rocking and rolling it just a little. There you go. Got the upper edge, that's all it really needs right there. You don't need to get rid of all of the black.
That one's good. Oh yeah. That's sharp, guys. I mean, that's it's sharp, sharp, sharp. So that's good. Now this one is the last one, and this is the one where I made into a uh, negative rake scraper. Now I tell you, I'm no fan of negative rake scrapers. Uh, you can't get them as sharp as you can one of these. Sim simply because your your two angles are are much more. They're not like they're not like this. You know, just like a knife. If you get a knife like that, you're gonna get a sharp edge, and you have a knife like that. So that's my thinking there. So uh, so I've already got the top break done here. So I'll just leave it alone and put this on upside down. All right, that's that. That's all it is to it. All right, I got it to the shape I want. These are rougher than what I wanted, but you know, with that, those all sand out pretty good. I could have worked on it with the square cutter a little more, but you know, it's, they sand pretty easy. So I'm gonna start off with a uh, palm sander. Some people call it butterfly sander. Step is a wet sand. All right, I'm getting ready to wet sand. Uh, the way I do it, these old habits of doing show cars. I use uh, warm soapy water. I use Dawn dish detergent. It keeps your sandpaper clean. I already got it down to 400 dry, so I'm going to go there's 600, then I'm going to go 1200, and then I'm going to go 2400. And then I'll go 3,200, and then I'll go 6,000, and then we'll go start using some paste. And if that don't do it, we'll pull out the buffer. But one thing good about this, I can sit down and do this. It was good sitting down. All right, I got the hole drilled. Up. I had to sand the hole out because the first bit really left a mess. But I did. All right, I'm going to make me a stopper, make it out of walnut. It's going to... Uh, it's going to go in, in that hole right there. I'm going to put a little lip on it. And then I'm going to put like a, a little ball. That's the plan anyway. And nice. Well, wrapped it up. So here it is. Made a couple little, couple little walnut stands to go under. Got a date on one, and I got wood whirler on the other. Got it all polished up and looking good. Need a light over here a little bit better. See if that helps any. There you go. And it's a wal walnut stopper. I think it really looks good, consider. Like I explained earlier, you know, think about the air in it, but you know, first time I've done this, so I don't think it's too bad. Polished up real nice. I did learn something though, and I can see it in here. And I always kept my uh, unused epoxy in the refrigerator, refrigerated. Well, about a couple months ago, I put it all in another refrigerator which wasn't refrigerated, 
And what, I'm, what I found was when I took it out of there that the hardener has a sort of a yellow hue to it. And you can, you can sort of see it in here a little bit. So I put everything back under refrigeration because that never happened before whenever I kept it cold all the time. So there's something there. Let me uh, take a few stills. You can see it from that end. And that's walnut, little stopper I made. Here's something interesting. I, I know you probably can't see it. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But right about there on this side, the heat from the process actually lifted the paint off the body of the starship. I mean, it just lifted it. I bought a metal one just simply because I knew that the plastic ones, I've seen enough of these guys, the plastic ones end up, end up uh, you know, melting and deforming, so that's why I did that. But anyway, there it is. I'll take a few stills and we'll wrap this baby up.